Ready. Hi, I'm Richard Carlton for drypractice.com. This is a video to discuss the issues of using snap caps and alternate tools for dry practice. Now I want to recommend a great video by James Yeager who talked about negligent discharges with your firearm. And negligent discharges are a critical concern with dry practice. When you're dry practicing, you want to make sure that you're actually getting dry clicks and not live bangs. And so I wanted to discuss a little bit about the alternatives that you have for dry practice. I'm going to go into detail with some of these tools in future videos, but I wanted to do a quick overview video and talk about my thoughts on negligent discharges and the tools that you use for dry practice. As James Yeager pointed out in his video, and what's common with a lot of folks, is that negligent discharges are frequently caused by people who are tired or who are distracted. Maybe they're fatigued, they've been working long days, that type of thing. So when I do dry practice, or dry testing of our software and we have it out here and we're testing at the range sometimes I actually find myself at the end of the day and I'm really tired now while my preferred dry practice tool is my live Glock 21 you know the idea of making sure that it's empty with no ammunition and an empty chamber no magazine I become concerned sometimes that I'm mentally a hundred percent there sharp as I can be for that dry practice session. Yet, I know that I need to dry practice. And so it gets into a situation where when I feel that I'm not 100%, but I know I need to dry practice, I prefer to pick up a tool. I put down my weapon. That's a full-size real pistol that shoots real bullets. And I pick up one of my other weapon systems for dry practice that have a colored slide on them or a colored part. Now, of course, there's always the famous orange gun, red gun, orange gun. And these are great training tools, but the reality is they're really lightweight. And so while I'm comfortable in using this for demonstrations with people, and if they get, you know, if they get swept with an orange gun, it's the only gun that I consider safe, realistically. Um, I don't sweep anyone with a weapon unless it's an orange gun, and then it's a training environment, maybe a takeaway drill or something like that. Um, the reality is, is that I prefer to grab a weapon that's going to mimic the feel of a Glock, but I don't recommend people use weapons that are trainers or simulators, but they're painted to look identical to a real weapon system. Here's an example right here. This is a, uh, turns out to be a airsoft type system, and it perfectly resembles a Glock. If someone pointed this at me, I would think in real life for sure that I was going to die. It doesn't have an uh, a orange uh, tip on the end of it, but, and it's slight even functions. The reality is if someone points this at me, I'm going to be concerned I'm going to be shot, and I'm going to be reaching for my real weapon to bring to bear on them. And so having people training with pretend guns that look like real guns, you know, when I was younger, I always hated it when people painted weapons because I was a kid and I hated that. And I said, oh, that's the dumbest thing in the world. But as a person who does dry practice now, I actually count on the painted weapon to keep me out of trouble. If I'm tired, if I'm fatigued, but I need to dry practice for some reason, I will go and I will find one of my weapons, an airsoft weapon of some type, that clearly has a painted slide or other component. The SIRT laser simulator is a great one. The slide doesn't move on it, but once again, it gives you the good grip, good feel of the Glock, and it allows you to get your presses in, and the bonus, of course, of seeing the laser. But I know that by using a weapon with one of my colored components that under no condition at any time can this weapon actually discharge a real bullet. And that to me is a great feeling of safety, I guess, knowing that I'm not going to make an accidental mistake and torch a round off during my dry practice session. Because I've been there when things like that happen and it gets really exciting. And so I highly recommend that people who are doing dry practice with dedicated dry practice tools make sure that their weapons are painted appropriately because the reality is if you look down here that weapon's clear and that weapon's clear is that you're not going to be able to easily discern between these two both of them look exceptionally deadly to me and so when I see a weapon that's solid black with accurate reproduction I assume it's a real weapon 
Now this weapon here, they uh, had no idea how weapons were supposed to be painted for training, so their idea of masking and painting was somewhat goofy, so I uh, don't necessarily recommend this, but this is a highly accurate reproduction of the Glock 17. It's a green gas airsoft weapon. And once again, this thing is so accurate, it's got real Glock sights on it. And so the last thing I need is for some person to be using this thinking they have a real gun and it doesn't go boom, or them thinking that uh, they have the airsoft gun by accident and they've picked up a real gun and they haven't chamber checked it because these things feel identical when you pick them up. But the idea with this is that I prefer to have my training weapons clearly painted so if I feel fatigued or I feel tired, I can pick up a weapon that has bright colors on it and I know that even though I can get my presses in, I'm not worried about torching a real round off during my dry practice session. So that's on the issue of colored slides. Another issue that we've been running into with regards to the dry practice app is the use of snap caps or dummy rounds. And this is where people like to use, uh, you know, basically ammunition where the primer and the powder has been removed. And I understand that the value of training with this, especially for doing uh, malfunction clearances and emergency reloads and things like that, but the reality with this is that these things can get you into trouble real fast if you're not 100% mentally sharp. So the official policy of Front Sight, the policy of drypractice.com is not to recommend these tools. And the reason is, is down here I have a pile of dry practice ammunition, right? If I'm not paying 100% attention to what I have on my hand and I load this into my magazine, I'm going to have a serious problem because I'll be talking to you on video and I'll start loading up the magazine and we'll be doing dry practice. And this happened to a guy the other day and he inadvertently killed a family member with his AK-47 of all things because he had dummy rounds in it mixed with live ammunition. And as I talk to you and I'm distracted or you're distracted at home, dry practicing, and you inadvertently get a real round of ammunition in here, suddenly your real round of ammunition looked just like those yellow rounds that you had stuffed in the weapon. And so you go click, tap, rack, click, tap, rack, and then boom, you get a live round going out into that weapon system. So you need to be exceptionally careful about having snap caps and using them at all because people are making mistakes about mixing live ammo with the snap cap ammo. And so the general policy of front sight is not to endorse or recommend the use of snap caps in any way because if you don't use them, you're never going to have a problem of mixing them up. We've had issues with students who have a negligent discharge end up blaming the fact that they mixed live ammunition with their snap cap ammunition. And they were told during their dry practice sessions not to use dummy ammunition. But they did anyway. They inadvertently mixed live ammunition in there and they're in the hotel room and they torch around right out the window of the hotel. So we highly recommend that you go ahead and forego use of these devices. And so when you see videos and we're using chapsticks or pin caps and you're laughing to yourself, ha 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 ha, it's not very realistic. Well, we're trying to keep ourselves out of trouble by not having a negligent discharge. If we're not 100% on top of our game, there's a chance of getting live ammunition mixed in there. So no ammunition means no ammunition. It's not anywhere in your training environment. You're in completely dry. There's nothing that remotely looks like real ammunition in your guns, in your body, in the room, in your dry practice environment. It doesn't exist. So I'm Richard Carlton for drypractice.com, and I'll see you at the range.